This training exercise, if you can try to think out loud and explain what you're thinking as you make the moves, I mean, you already have a higher title uh, than us woman grandmaster, so it's, it should go Which well. Which clearly means I'm better, yes, of course. Oh no, Tubbo's in here spying on hey, his competition. Tubbo! Tubbo, you ain't gonna learn shit because I haven't learned shit, okay? <laughs> you're gonna get worse by watching. <laughs> That's funny because we asked Tubbo who he, it's a trash talk, and he was like, honestly, Honestly, I think I'm gonna get crushed. <laughs> uh, uh, what is his experience level like? Uh, he's about 700 now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I was coaching him last Dude, night. Dude, that's still remember. so good. Yeah, we, I think you can get started and then we'll fix your time to make sure that you're not behind. Yeah, how do you get that uh, woman GM title? I'm assuming it was with QT, right? Oh yeah, that was that was an awesome. Yes. Woman GM. Dude, it's so funny. I'll be playing random games, and for some reason on my phone, the chat isn't disabled. So people will just be like, "How did you get that title?" And I'll be like, "Uh, my dad owns Chess.com." I'll just say some random. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, here we go. We got it. All right. So let's go d4. Um, so I'm guessing you already learned some basic openings in terms of putting your pawns to the center. Do you normally play d4 or e4? Um, I watched one video, Leslie's video mm -hmm. with uh, Hikaru on the London system, and the Ooh. London system just looked so pretty that That's I was what like, I like oh, this, this is my prodigy. It's the London is the yeah. only opening I ever play as white, and Alex always makes fun of me, but it's my favorite <laughs> opening ever. I, I don't like this is it going. too. Okay, this is perfect. And I feel like at least at my rating, sometimes people are like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. She just brought her bishop out. <laughs> For beginners, you know? it's great, and it's a really comfortable opening. Yeah, what, what's cool about it is the move order rarely changes regardless what your opponent plays. So you don't have to remember that much opening, and then it's really intuitive. Yeah, agreed. So far, so good, and Andrea can give you the best London pointers. I think I do G, uh, I mean F3, or Knight to F3 next, right? Good, correct. Okay, oh, Bishop G7, so we're just doing, and ask us if you think anything we're doing is weird or unusual. I, oh, oh. Uh, is that called a, it's, it starts with an F. Fianchetto. Fian yeah, your bishop. <laughs> yeah, you should give you should give it a, a, a better name. Some streamers Fianchetto. called it a sniper house, which I thought was a little more cool. <laughs> Actually, that does sound kind of cool. But to be fair, the original name sounds cool, too. That's true. It sounds very fancy. Oh, uh, yes, the Fianchetto. Ha ha. <laughs> Is it not French or anything? It sounds like it kind of it's Italian. I thought it was Italian. Yeah, yeah. yeah that makes oh, sense. That makes sense. Okay, this is something I'm a bit unsure about. Whether I do uh, bishop to d3 or pawn to c3. So the move First. order doesn't, that's the thing, it, it doesn't matter too much. It, it depended if Alex pushed her c5 pawn and was threatening like a c4, then c3 first is important, but here it doesn't make a difference. And I'll also okay, say, true. since you're cramming so much information before Saturday, on the move order in the opening, don't sweat it. Yeah. Um, your opponents, no one's gonna know they're not going to react differently. Order, so exactly. So it'll be totally fine. If you say so. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to play what I see them playing often, which is yeah. moves like knight f6. Good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. The opening is looking very nice. I kind of want to teach you about the... Do you ever push your h3 pawn pokey? Sometimes, but typically only when they bring the bishop out. Okay, yeah, that makes sense to attack it. So in the London, it's a really good safe move that you can always play because it makes room for your bishop to come to h2, and we'll show you how we can attack that bishop. So, no, no, you should, no, no, no. I'm not going to take it. Oh, I'm okay, just going to okay. give the example. So <laughs> I was going to wait for her to push h3 first, but we can do it. So the reason you usually push h3 is because of mm -hmm. this move that puts pressure on your bishop. And you often mm -hmm. want to save your bishop. In this position, you don't have a hideaway spot to go to. True. I could only go to g3 and then trade you. Yeah, right. which isn't too bad. But yeah. yeah, that's why in future games, you can always play it as a safe move. And if you ever forget, don't panic. Just move your bishop back one. And often, if uh, your, your bishop takes, you can take with either pawn, depending on what your strategy is. So I move back here? You usually move back to g3 in this position. OK. Cool. And then I want to push the h pawn? So you only want to push the h pawn before your bishop gets under attack. 
Also, in f yeah, so in future games, you can push it before you go bishop d3 or something. Yes. Just to not and I'd only push it to h3? Yes, one square, because okay. if you extend your pawns too much where your king is going to castle, it creates weaknesses. Mm -hmm. True. Uh, and I do want to say one thing, because uh, this is really different than classical chess, especially when it's faster and it's online. And a as chess players, you know, growing up, we were always taught to go for the most accurate moves. But I, I think when it's online chess and when you're learning, you want to mm -hmm. kind of balance it with playing good moves that are fast instead of perfect moves that sink all your time. True. And on top of that, People in the tournament won't really punish small inaccuracies. The only things that will really make you lose your game is if you like blunder a major piece or checkmate or blunder something. Blunder my queen. <laughs> the Botan's gambit. Yeah, yeah. That's where you learn the Botan. <laughs> my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a feeling there'll be some Botan's gambits in the tournament. Yeah. I I hope so. I was watching Tubbo and Fundy play last night. I saw plenty of them. Really? Okay, yeah, I'm not trying to hear that. I mean, it, actually, no, Tubbo, yeah, was completely winning, and then he just completely blundered his queen to Fundy. I was like, oh, I guess I coached him, so, you know. <laughs> hey, Tubbo, Tubbo's in the, in the chat, Andrea. <laughs> so, okay, Tubbo, you Sorry, still Tubbo. ended up winning more games. Yeah. So, it's, it's just acquired taste. Um, also, with this move, I've always mm -hmm. been a bit iffy about this bishop positioning because when i do move my knight here he's uh undefended so right uh, i'm glad you did this because I, I actually would not yeah, know what to do in a regular let's game see. so what options would you consider here i could move my knight so that my queen can take back mm -hmm. um i can also move my bishop elsewhere which is decent because your bishop can't really capture anything else but it also feels very like a beta bitch move. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Did you consider trading at all? Uh, oh, uh, trading? Okay, that would be decent, but I. So what do you think is better? To defend like or to it's trade? almost like playing on your terms, if that makes sense. I, I actually really like the way you're thinking about this. What you did really well, and that you can apply to every game you play, is when you're considering moves, do breadth first, then depth. So be like, I have option one, two, and three. It usually s helps you in case you would have completely mm -hmm. overlooked a move and get tunnel vision on one. So now that you have those three options, which one do you think would be the oh, best? I could also push this pawn, I think, because I have two things defending mm -hmm. good okay we'll let you make your move and then we'll give you feedback after you decide yeah because all of your options are viable here i kind of like this nice i think recently i've been doing a lot of things with the london system that i haven't <laughs> done before just to <laughs> no, explore this it. is great actually e4 is like one of the main ideas for the london because that's the whole point of the c pawn holding down the d4 so this is a great strategy that you know so the only piece of advice, which honestly your move is probably gonna be better in most games while trading won't. But so if you traded bishops, do you see what you would do to black's pawn structure? Yeah, it would be doubled up. How do you know that in a week of chess poking? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> jeez. I mean, okay. well, someone mentions it like once and you go, ah, yes, the pawn is one <laughs> on top of the other instead of side by side. There you go. But it sounds very advanced. The... Yeah. Well, actually, thank the you, double pawn. Thank pawns. you very much. I'm a prodigy. <laughs> you really are. Um, and then, okay, in addition to doubling the pawns, where is the potential weakness it's starting to create? Or a file? When I say a file, we're talking about a vertical, vertical line line on the board mm -hmm. is it so what file is it opening up the g file good okay. and so that's actually which is really good because it attacks the king exactly so, so only actually this right, position, that isn't a bad trade yeah mm -hmm. which sometimes many times when they're going to attack your bishop it'll be defended and your move is probably the best but in this case since our only defender was the pawn you want to take the, any opportunity to start opening the king mm-hmm that being said okay. this move is still good and it you still, still have a, a good move, position though. yeah both are good. okay no, I'm really glad you guys explained that because then I'll know, like, I remember uh, just situations where, like, I'd bring my bishop out here mm -hmm. and then he would push this pawn. I'd be like, <gasps> you know, like, that's, like, fucking ruining my wait, life. Wait, 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 which pawn? The C... Per... Which pawn? Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> In, like, a whole different stream. setup, if I bring... Wait, do you see my arrows? Uh, no, we, we can't see your arrows oh, as your shit. opponent, but we're going to open your your stream. Sorry. We can see them now. Okay, we got okay, it. Okay, yeah. I just meant, uh... Bring the oh, bishop, bishop B5. to B five, yeah, uh, to like create a pin or something, and then <laughs> they would push this, and I would like freak out, and then someone was like, "No, it's actually pretty decent if you just like trade 
for the night and then oh, he has like I stacked or, or whatever it oh, is, yes. right? Oh, so in front of the king, just, right? Yeah, and just knowing things yeah. like that, like, oh, it's actually fine to trade in this mm -hmm. scenario because it's advantageous yes. because you ruin his pawn structure or whatever else. Helps me a lot whenever this scenario will come up. Perfect. Looks like you already know how to apply yeah. that. So and also great. in the London, this is the only common trade you'll have on your bishop when they bring their bishop out and you can always open it and or or if you're attacking their knight so you you'll probably remember it and see it often if you keep playing the london system okay cool sounds good okay so now she has her knight in the middle okay let's say we trade off so do you think that was a good or bad trade for us we can continue playing i think it might have been a little bit better for you guys especially because i haven't castled yet and because it kind of... I kind of tried to trick you there. Really sure. Pardon? I, I tried to trick you there because we're, we're not going to be playing our best moves here. We're going to try to play similar to some moves your opponents might. And it was, it was actually a bad <laughs> trade for us. Really? Although, I, I want to validate one very good observation Pokimane made, which is her king is still in the center, and on the E file, there's only one pawn. So having that kind that of... so naked. Yeah, you, you always want to be aware of that, because in certain positions, if we had a check or something that would ruin your castle, that would be dangerous. Luckily, there are no specific moves here. So Andrea's question was more about, is it better to have two pairs of bishops or a bishop and a knight? I guess a bishop and a knight. So that... Or maybe not. I'm, I'm really not sure, actually. She, it's I'm, okay. She hasn't covered this one yet. Yeah, Finally, exactly. something we could teach her. You knew the double pawn. So the, the second mm -hmm. really um, important thing to keep in the opening is called the bishop pair. So even though bishops and knights are worth the same, two bishops are normally stronger because covering all the diagonals, they just work better together. So normally you don't want to trade your bishop for a knight unless, let's say, you know, you're ruining their pawn structure or it's part of a bigger plan. You know, I always thought that, and I, because I feel like, especially when you just get into the game, you're like, mm -hmm. it's so much easier to see how the bishops attack and move. Yes. Yeah, so I feel like that's that's actually pretty intuitive. But also, I feel like in my elo, it doesn't people matter fall too much. To night traps so yeah, much easier, exactly. you know? <laughs> actually, yeah, and actually, a lot of grandmasters say that knights are trickier in speed chess because it is easier to fall for a knight mm -hmm. trap. So, so this is kind of a high level strat that honestly, if you're ever worried about it in the game, don't, don't think about it too much. But if you, as you progress towards pog champs, then that might be something mm -hmm. that actually becomes helpful. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So let's say we do this move. Okay. So I try to do this thing where I just understand the purpose of yes you know, Perfect. my opponent's move. Fantastic. I don't know who taught you that, but that coach A+. <laughs> I think it's, yeah. I think that's probably the thing that'll help me the most. Most um, definitely. That's what we've been trying to get everyone to ask. And, you know, there's always a move when they forget, and that's when the blood Yeah, and that's them. when the queen drops. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not you, Tubbo. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you're great, Tubbo. <laughs> yeah, Tubbo, you're perfect. You're going to win the whole thing. Um, yeah, so uh, I feel like you're not necessarily attacking anything new. Good. So I think mm -hmm. I just castle here. Perfect. You did exactly what we had arrowed on our screen. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to take the bishop here and try to explain how you're considering the two options. Yeah, so I can take with my F2 pawn or my H2 pawn. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the time Thank you, Ryan. you want to take, like, capture towards the center. Or at least that's what That's I a true with. strategy, yep. Yeah, but also in this particular situation i feel like it makes my king more vulnerable because it opens this whole file mm -hmm. i guess the, the whole h file so i actually think i would capture with my f2 pawn if you can let them know yeah <laughs> yeah so uh, what you do really well so far is you understand the nuance in chess you remember rules and when they don't apply to these specific positions. So that is a really good observation. Your answer is correct. You don't want to open up the H file, but the other thing that taking with your F pawn does is it opens up your rook's control a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So good job. True. Yay. Okay. Now, here we go. I feel like I could move my bishop back. Um, I could also go for the knight trade. So what, what, oh yeah, so you, you saw that f5 attacked your bishop. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, they're, they're both good options, so you could go for either here. 
I think I'd probably just move it back. Good. So your bishop here is actually very strong. Your, your pawns, your center pawn are in dark squares, which is the ideal mm -hmm. thing you want. You always want your pawns, if you're left with one bishop, to be on the opposite color. So choosing not to trade it, and especially when there's this huge, weak, light square diagonal that the black king is on, is the best idea. Mm -hmm. <gasps> True. And there's another note that you can remember. Um, bishops are usually better in open positions because they can travel across the board faster, whereas knights are better in closed positions because it's easier for them to hop over pawns. Okay, got it. It's a lot of information. So I know, as long as you just remember one of these bits about bishops or knights, that's I good. mean, no, actually, it's a lot. I, I think Pokey's I've never been considered... sponging these up so quickly, so. <laughs> yeah, true. That makes so much sense, though. You do want your pawns on the opposite ones because they're also attacking the opposite color right, squares. Right, right. Yeah, they're attacking the opposite color square. They're not blocking oh. your own bishop. So very good strategy. Beautiful. My mom's in chat, and she said, yeah, she's good. <laughs> oh, Even so mom's so proud. <laughs> My mom's been trying to learn chess for a long time. Yeah, she's right here learning with you, probably. Yeah she, yeah, she watches your guys' stream every day. She does. She She'll wants text to us about WGM it. It's so too. funny. That's so cute. Yeah. I wish my mom was like tech savvy and <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> one, one time my mom saw a mate before someone were teaching. She's like, I saw it first. I feel so good. <laughs> Dude, that's one of the best feelings. I think that's what I love about chess too. Like, it's so satisfying. Yeah, when exactly. Even just beating your opponent is so satisfying, but especially like having them fall for a trap you said or something like that. Exactly, exactly. Let's make a pun. Okay. I could bring my pawn to b4, which looks decent. Mm -hmm. Could also just match with like, a4. Good. Keep going through breadth first. What other moves would you consider? Considering just ignoring it and like moving my queen and then moving my rook to the E file or something. Mm hmm. Which is something I want to do at some point. Good. I think, I think that's about all I'd consider for now. Yeah, those are, those are really good options to start with. Yay. So which, which one looks the best now? So then pick the option that looks the best and go deeper into that one. Okay, actually, the more I thought about it, the more I liked moving my pawn to a4 because my bishop is protecting it, which further allows me to just, like, move my queen and, mook and move my rook out because Thank you, otherwise, if I move my rook out, nothing is protecting the a2 pawn. Okay, so go for a4, and then we'll tell you what we think after you move it. Good, and I, so I like this plan that you pointed out the e-file, but you said you could do it later, so that's great. Mm -hmm. You always, you, for moves like this, where you just slowly improve your pieces, you always have time. So I like that you're taking it step by step. Now you prevented our attack, and then you can go for your plan on the e-file. A4, or on the complete opposite side of the board, H5, are often mm -hmm. moves that you block with the same pawn move. And this is another strategy you can use in openings or attacks against the king. So usually you just want to respond with the same thing, basically? It, it's not every it's single time, but mm -hmm. often if somebody plays something like h5 against your king, you, you mm -hmm. do often reply with h4, and same on the queen side, because you don't want to give your opponent too much space. With other pawns, mm -hmm. it's not as clear, but these side pawns, usually that's the response. Okay, got it. Cool. So Noted. I'm so peepo G. <laughs> I was just going to speed up a little bit. We might flag. No, no, girl, I got you. I don't you. think you can... Don't ever say, girl, I got you to be <laughs> a girl. Shut up, Andrea. I got your girlfriend. I'm your brother. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> you guys are so cute. <laughs> okay, bro. That's more like it. Thank you. Question, do I want to... Not in friends, this... Sag. <laughs> I think in general, I know I want to move my rooks to the D and E file, but in this situation, do I prefer E and F? Or should I still go for like straight down the middle? Perfect question. So wh what would your instinct say for those? My knight is still defended by G2, so I guess I could go for straight down the middle. And actually, I do very much want to contest uh, the E5 spot. 
Okay, so you are right. Uh, the rook to e1 and d1 are the correct choices here. Another thing that will help you decide where to put your rooks is looking at the pawn structure, because usually mm -hmm. you want to put your rooks on the file that has the least amount of pawns, or if yeah. there's a direct threat like helping push a pawn. But the f1 is already a semi-open. Uh, true, but... True. I was going to instruct in a different way, so I don't know actually <laughs> which rook move is better, but I was going to say bringing her A rook to E1 is actually stronger because the F rook is already doing a really good job holding a semi-open file holding and defending the king. down by the king. <laughs> yeah, and so your queen is already covering the D file, so I like keeping your pieces more close to your king. There, there's one Ooh. other technique on that. But if I you play your rook to E1, same. you trap your rook on F1 and it limits its, its mobility. Whereas if it's on E1, it could go between F1 and E1. But it's it's not a... True. Y you can have different plans. Same as we did. Chess usually has more than one correct yeah, way to play. Yeah, I think it's more of a stylistic yeah. choice. But regardless, mm -hmm. you have the good the good okay. idea. There's only times when we disagree on moves. I was going to make a move. Oh, I yeah. love that though. It really does show how stylistic chest can be yeah, exactly. is in general. Yep. Okay, well, we actually have kind of an ugly position. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to play this. I'll try to get a little yeah, crazy. Yeah, we need to start attacking to test her blunders. Because her strategy is very strong. Yeah. I feel like you'd be a really good strategic style player. Which is good, because that's what the London <laughs> is for. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm glad. I just need to learn kind of how to transition into mid-game and like start attacking pieces basically perfect which is pretty much what we're getting into right now so how many times is your pawn on d4 attacked here yeah you're out attacking me basically yes so the problem is that now if we take your pawn we can grab an extra pawn mm -hmm. um so usually when your opponent attacks one of your pieces try to just double check if it's defended or not because um, otherwise you can sometimes get tunnel vision and focus on your own plan, but you also have to yeah. react. True. So let's let's say we didn't see it and we play this move, which is very possible in the tournament, honestly. <laughs> Just responding. We're not doing the math fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'm concerned. I need to do the math on the freaking E5 pawn. Take yeah. time. And, and, and you can also use arrows because, hey, that's it's I online love that chess. Shit, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> arrows are always fun. Arrows are actually a really nice visual. Thank you so much to everybody who subscribed so far. We really appreciate it. Uh, you still beat me out because you moved your rook. So, how do I counteract that? So, the pawn on D4 is still under attack, right? I didn't mean to do that. Oh, uh, why, why, what, what's wrong with this move? I mean, I, I would blunder my queen. <laughs> yes. Well, oh but how much are you <laughs> actually losing? You're, you're, you're not blundering your whole queen. Not a yeah, full I mean, I, I take back yeah, a budget but, queen. So a budget yes, queen. How much material are you losing? Let me see. Um, you take, I'll take back. I guess I lose a pawn or are we even? I mean, I guess it depends if I also take back on the knight, but I don't think I would. Like, if you took on e5 after. All right, let's Here, do we'll it. Play, we'll, we'll play it out. Right, we'll, we'll set up some traps oh. for you to win a back later. So, well, yeah, yeah, how much would you total? Let's not count. We don't have to count the pawn. So, just the trade we just did. I think I lost three. Correct. Good. So, you lost yeah. the knight. The knight, yeah. Good. Which is, is not too bad. Not the worst shit. Better than not a queen, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and losing yeah, a piece, okay. <laughs> losing a piece on a, under, you know, say 1,200 rating in rapid chess, it's, it's something you can come back from. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so right now I see that my <clears throat> bishop is hanging. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, honestly, I could check to buy myself a move <laughs> to figure what the fuck I want to do. <laughs> That's an um, option. Otherwise, yeah. I can move him around. I could also move my bishop to c1 good so what do you think uh, you know we're down a piece but what is one of your strengths in this position my broskies are together that's true the rooks <laughs> anything else there's one broski he's kind of far away but he's doing better um i think just the fact that my bishop kind of has like a direct possible line to the king and i do have i think like the most pushed 
pawn, essentially? Good. So I wanted to point out that pawn. We call that a passed pawn. Since there's no black pawn that could trade it as it advances. So, it, I mean, in this position, it's a little bit tricky because it's already under... Because you have two attacking. Yeah, the, but you could save it. You could save it using your bishop plan on that diagonal. So that is really one of your main strengths. Having a pawn that's so advanced already in just the first 20 moves. Oh, true. Because if I check you you'll have to move and then i can use the next move to move my pawn up right? exactly and you're you know your pawn on b2 will be hanging but regardless but yeah. you have two pawns under attack and I saving the past one it. yeah this is pretty much your, your biggest strength so let's say i'm gonna play closer alex has been going kind of tough right? i'm gonna play closer to let's say like a 1200 1300 level but it's still really? very tricky mm -hmm. um <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna give, okay, I'll let you play here. Okay, let's see if you can find the best way to save your pawn. Uh, the thing is, in a situation like this, I mean, I can't just keep pushing my pawn. I mean, I could push it once more, but then your rook is blocking it. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. So right now it's in a good square because you're, you have your bishop defending it. and. Mm -hmm. You're also keeping black's pieces kind of tied up, like the rook on e8. So mm -hmm. normally if you're using, if you're keeping such a powerful piece to defend one pawn, that's good. So I like that you, you notice you don't want to push it too much, maybe later. Sorry, I just YOLO'd, you know, I no, got that, two and a half yeah, minutes. Yeah, <laughs> no, that was good. There was a slightly better move. Do you know another rook move you could have used to defend it? It's not directly, not directly defending the pawn, but... We can also show her that in analysis board after. I feel like I don't see the matrix here. Yeah, because this is a really hard hard move to yeah, see. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that analysis. Uh, since oh. we're already here, it's it's the rook that's next to your king. You move it mm -hmm. up one oh, square. Don't spoil it. Why are you doing it? If I, well, I guess if he takes... Oh, okay. actually, that's true. Yeah, so you could defend through pieces, which takes, takes a little bit to see. And if you would have taken your rook... In the end game, you always want to start bringing your king towards the center, so it would help you. Mm -hmm. True. Okay, so let's say, what would somebody play here? <laughs> let's play this. <laughs> I just, th I find it so funny. You guys are like trying to play <laughs> much worse than you actually are. You know? Yeah, because then you have more chances. To, it, like, it's more like a training tactics, game. Exactly. <laughs> okay, but now that I that way you see learn more, the matrix. Nice. Great. Great. <laughs> okay, let's take. Uh, okay, perfect. Ah, he's so naked. <laughs> but that's no. okay. But in the end game, he is a little bit less shy. He's not so scared to get himself out there. You know? <laughs> yeah. True. True. When true, there true. aren't snipers around, the king likes to go for a stroll. You know, he's otherwise. He's a slow guy, but mm -hmm. it's finally his time. He, he sacrifices his pieces before he feels okay to go out. Uh, okay, so let's let's move our king as well. Okay, let's see what plan Pokey makes. Beautiful. Yeah, open file. Best move. He <laughs> he. Okay, um, I, actually, let's not say anything for the next move either. Sure. She goes for it. Uh, you have a really, really good plan so far. Here's the thing, I feel like my plan is a little bit foiled. You see, I wanted to kind of force the, um, like, making a queen, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can't push my pawn up until I get rid of the knight. Right. Um, and the, the other question I have, actually, yeah, do you want to go for any trades here? No, because you're up, right? Yes, correct. Okay, so you already knew that. Um, so, so I like the fact that you're trying to go for the queen promotion. You can. There's times when you want a plan like that and it's just not possible, so you have to go for something else as well. Okay. Maybe I do something with my bunched up pawns near my king. So, uh, mm -hmm. the pawns next to the king, usually in an end game, if you just push your pawns without your pieces, then you might actually create a weakness with them. True. I could also just go d7. Yes! Trade some yes! Stuff. Perfect! Okay. That was the move we so had arrowed. this is another okay, okay. really important rook strategy. The seventh mm -hmm. rank, or the second if you're black, is the strongest mm -hmm. rank for your rook because you're attacking the base of the pawns 
And what's another thing your rook is doing right now? Pinning the bishop. Beautiful. And obviously defending the promote, promoting pawn. Maybe yeah. you can't push it yet, but this is a great move. We'll get there. Exactly. So <laughs> now what you're doing is oh, shoot. you're shoot. distracting our rook away from putting pressure on your pawn because we have to go defend. So, so, so if you see what you've been able to do is you've been able mm -hmm. to create now two weaknesses because you have your pass pawn and the c7 and that's a, a very OP strategy. True, but now, I mean, I still can't push my pawn and I don't think there's anything I can directly take. I could maybe do bishop to d5. Why don't you think you can push? Because the knight will take Thank you, right? Cobra. And what happens if the knight takes the pawn? I, I take the knight. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but also, I, I feel like then I lose my You don't want to give your precious pawn yeah, even if it's worth less. That's true. I almost, I kind of feel like it's my win con here, but maybe I'm just not believing enough. No, I mean, actually, so I... I actually, I this is a very advise, psychological yeah. thing where mm -hmm. often people want to win so much that even sometimes when you're in a slightly worse position, you push mm -hmm. for a win instead of trying to push for first equalizing and then going for the win. I do it so you still. Say always do equalizing. If you're down material and you have a chance to equalize the position, mm -hmm. you should usually prioritize that first. Okay. And I, I wish I listened to my own advice during Blitz games. I get really <laughs> greedy, but then, and then I always tell myself, why don't I never learn? And I know it's a psychological thing. Well, listen, you're 2200 <laughs> rating, so I think you're doing fine. <laughs> I thought you were gonna call her 22 years yeah, old. Yeah, she was gonna get so excited. Shut up, Andrea. <laughs> You're 22 years old and 2200 rating. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> this is why Pokey's oh, my truly favorite. Amazing. Truly amazing. <laughs> oh, to be young, to be young. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. Um, okay, so let's see. So let's see and if we I can have a stop it without attack giving after. our knight. Okay. Actually, you know what? You've been playing really well. So I'm going to try to get a little crazy here. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Actually, this would have been much better, but I Let's think see. this, this, hmm. is, this I, is tricky. And and feel free to take your time here. You can also think okay. out loud if you want. Oh, okay. So I was thinking now it's a little bit convoluted because there will be so many turns to like get my rook in a spot to defend. Mm -hmm. But actually, I think I just take the trade or I move my rook. To d8. Okay. If you take, I take. And what and else are you planning? Right. So what if we and don't? And then the take? others. Let's say. Uh, I guess we're actually. Actually, it's complete loss. We have no. We have to take right away. Yeah. That I was think. Pokey's thought to say, Andrea. Sorry, <laughs> Andrea. You don't okay. get a gold star. No, the other thing I was looking at else, actually, but... if you had brought your knight anywhere else, I would have also considered bringing my bishop to f7. To like yes. cover the spot that. Great right plan! Um, Holy see, smokes! Yeah. You've been playing for a week? <laughs> Two weeks. A week and a half? So yeah, like that. okay, that's, so that's so actually clean. insane. Oh, but we have clean. to make sure no blunders. <laughs> and that is perfect. But the strategy is so good. But, but also, isn't that bad? Because, well, I move it and then your knight just takes, right? In this position, yes, but mm -hmm. I, I think it, with your point, if the knight would have moved anywhere else, then f7 yeah. would have been not protected, and you could do it to back up Got e8. It. Got it. But, okay. but after rook d8, so what do you, what move could black possibly try here? Uh, 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 sorry, um, I feel like maybe I didn't think that one. No, no, no. This is the best. <laughs> this is the best move you could have done. What else can black do? Maybe. I guess maybe move their knight. And what happens if black moves his knight? I mean, I don't think they can move their knight to block the promotion on e8, right? I think they can only move it to attack, like, where the rook would be trading. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So there, there's actually no way to block the pawn from promoting, which mm -hmm. is why this is such a powerful move. And usually when you have a pass pawn, that's why you try to work together with your rook and your pawn. Oh, but then I think that would equalize? Let me think it through. So mm -hmm. if you move, I promote, or maybe if I think it through, maybe it would be, it would be better to right. take. So if first. the knight goes to f7, what options would you consider? So I'd either push my pawn or I would trade. Uh, if I push my pawn, 
then you can take mm -hmm. my rook and then if I trade then you capture my queen and I think that's advantageous for you so I think I would take the rook and then push my pawn yep on the next available yeah that's turn. that's good you could also take the knight with your bishop but uh, honestly the variation with taking oh, the rook is, is my is almost as good it's winning still. So that that, that is very good sure. find. So, okay. okay, I think I would take with the bishop then. I, w I was like so tunneled on that exactly, part. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. I think that's, that was the main test. And it's really easy to get tunnel vision when you have a winning plan like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're like, I do this, then he does this, then I do this, and then he does Yeah, and there's actually another thing we're missing. So, but go at first, I, I wanna, I'd rather have him play it out. So okay. let's go for this. Well, maybe. So we'll, we'll try to do a slightly different move, just to test on here, too. Oh my god, okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> you solved it, and here's another one for you. <laughs> okay, I think this still works. Yeah, it's not too tricky. <laughs> I mean, no, we're no, just down actually, initially, piece. it was definitely one of those things that right away you're like, uh. <laughs> yeah, then and you know, like there's play a it out step by step. That's good, though. That's good. Yeah. So, so now you're actually up material. Sag, but it is what it is, you know. <laughs> what do you mean, Sag? This is good. <laughs> yeah, you dropped a you piece this. and now you're back. You're winning. Okay, okay. I guess I can just take mm -hmm. the pawn. Nice. Start taking random stuff. Yes. Um, Until I dwindle down your material. <laughs> <laughs> That's the attitude, evil pokey. <laughs> yes. Uh, evil genius roleplay would be so funny for the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> actually so true but i've also just been like looking forward to um wearing beth Harmon inspired <gasps> clothes <laughs> yeah you should pull up to pog champs with alex actually tried to do a, a beth Harmon cosplay why are you saying try well, no no succeeded succeeded well andrea did <laughs> what do you mean i didn't praise it anyway i want to see it you guys should link me later uh, yeah no, she did a great job no, okay I, I, you know what it did look bad i admit <laughs> I doubt it looked bad. No, it looked you guys really look good. good as people, uh, you know? Well, people kept asking me if I was Ronald Weasley's sister. <laughs> oh my god. That bad? <laughs> it was pretty bad. Good friends are oh, honest. No. I'll say oh, no. the hair didn't suit her, her best, but it was a, it was as accurate as she could make it. Thanks, Andrea. It was, it was a good effort. Exactly. That's why I said tried. See? <laughs> Actually, right before you did that, I was looking to do bishop to c2. Oh, to put pressure yeah, on the I pawn? Still do. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, actually, here you're just so winning. We're just in struggle town. We're just going to defend everything <laughs> we can. Yeah. Just our king, his three pawns, and his two buddies. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, this is pretty much forced. Sad squad but, over here. But also in this situation, like, um, I feel like seeing checkmate is hard. Also. Yeah, so I think what we should do is let Pokey play for the rest. We'll play with the time we have and see if she can beat us. Yes, we're, we're not going to oh, give you geez. any more tips here. Letting you go. <laughs> fly, Pokey, <Yeah>. fly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then we'll analyze after. Pretend you're playing Tubbo. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Tubbo taking notes. You guys, mods. All oh, the mods are appreciated, Sylvana Okami. Uh, t t you guys, Tubbo is awesome. We're obviously just just doing friendly pokes. Um, that's why we have these participants, you guys. It's such a fun gang of people. Tubbo does play, and he's good, C Bella. He's good. He's going to be playing on Saturday. Uh, okay, let's try to attack her rook. I'm gonna give her three minutes. I think that's a little bit more fair. Because it is very low on time. So let's do that. Tubbo is a goat? Yeah, I mean, these Minecrafters plus a Pokey and Lily have been learning so quickly. I think gamers in general just learn chess. I, I wonder what she's gonna do if I keep just trying to annoy her rook. Knights are tricky. So I think this is gonna take Pokey some time to just uh, tr try to look and see what she should do with her rook. Okay, good, so she stopped that. Um, and now I'm gonna come here. Yes, pushing the pass pawn, that's what we like to see. How mean should we be, chat? Should I do this? Yes, we're gonna try to be tricky, we're gonna try to be tricky. Not too tricky though. 
This is the move I want to see now. B5. Also, I can't believe Pokey has been playing for a week or two. That is insane. Uh, geez. What's up? Hello. Botes mod love. They were scared to get water. <laughs> thanks, thanks, V10 Day. Andrea has her two friends. My two best friends are visiting. Yeah, they're very funny. Oh, we're mute because Pokey's playing. Yeah, because I don't want to distract her. Good, Thank good. you, V10 Day. And they're like, oh, we wanted water, but we didn't know if we could come out. I was like, you guys can get anything. So in in the room, scared. pets, in the room. <laughs> they were scared of Alex, too. No, they love me. Oh, no, no, no. Scary Alex. What do you mean, scary Alex? They're scared of your wrath. No, they're not. They were. You locked your friends in the closet? No, she locked no, them in her room. room. I didn't lock them. I said, hey, guys, do whatever you want. I'm going to stream now. She locked them and made them. There's not even, that's not even possible to lock them from the outside. I'm trying to be tricky. Yeah, you, that's you know that I do that. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, let's see if she keeps pushing pawns. So hopefully far, so good. Word. No, 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 she's focused. She's focused. Um, they saw two streams ago when Alex and Andrea were dressed as goons. That's true. <laughs> uh, no, okay. they weren't scared of me. Okay, so far, so good. So she... She's playing this so well. Okay, let's try to trick her. E -E. I mean, we could like fork on d4, but I don't even. Don't worry, I'm coming for for the I tricks. I don't think she'll fall for anything. Well, I'm doing my best, okay, Andrea. <laughs> no, no, I, it's, I, that's what I want. I want. I'm very happy if she does if she won't blunder, especially with the time pressure. Boom. Only one minute. Look at this. Let's good, see. Good, good. Let's see if she knows this how to push tough. the eight This is tough. This is tough, honestly. And with she only has a minute. Yeah. So it's kind of rough. Man, she's fine. playing so well with time pressure. She's. She didn't even promote Andrea. She shooed away the knight. That is really I think, impressive. I, I don't know how she's not like at least 700. She's been playing very well. Now this is a good trade for her. Also, I'm going to try not to flag. Yeah. <laughs> Opa. Can you eat five? No. Uh, wow. Are you kidding wow. me? Are she's actually you so kidding good. me? Are you know. kidding me? Uh, I, I had a feeling from what I... Oh, oh. I mean, it's fine. So it's, it's not even a blunder, though. She has all of our pieces. That was a pretty nice bishop move with one minute, too. What the heck? How did she learn so quickly? Yeah, that's why we were just saying she was 400. 400. I saw her games, and I knew for sure she was above it. Jeez. If this is what she did in two weeks, PogChamps should be afraid of her. Yeah, no, I'm really excited. Very excited. Draw. And, and I think she's going to do really well Saturday. <gasps> but she's still winning. If she stops her pawn, it's still winning. It's still winning. Oh, she saved good, the pawn. Good, good, good. She saved the pawn. She has winning. 37 seconds. I'm going to give her more time if she gets no, too no, low. No, I just no, want her to feel the pressure. I want her to feel the pressure. Yeah. Okay, let's see if she knows she has to push her A pawn. She has to push the A pawn. Oh, I guess she has a plan. I'm free moving. <laughs> oh no, she has 16 seconds. She's oh, gonna, gonna flag, flag me. Gonna flag. She's gonna flag me. Thanks, the press worm, for the prime. She, she will flagged us. <laughs> Pokey, yeah, you I did it. You did. You flagged us. It doesn't matter if you <laughs> blundered your wrist. I know how to do that checkmate. <laughs> I, I believe, believe you. you. I believe you. That was so <laughs> that impressive. Was great. I was so spicy. <laughs> I was so I was try harding against you, Pokey. I was pre-moving. Really? I was trying to trap I was you. Yeah, I was sweating. 